and wait upon your word. We honor and adore you, our great and mighty Lord. And hear, O oh gracious Savior, accept the love we bring, that we who know your favor may serve you as our king. And whether our tomorrows be filled with good or ill, we'll triumph through our sorrows and rise to bless you still. To marvel at your beauty and glory in your ways, and make a joyful duty our sacrifice of praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I want to take the opportunity of welcoming Bishop Talley to St. Louis Catholic Church on this special day of the, of the uh, t year, and welcome uh, you to, uh, to the dinner as well for the Mardi Gras and hopefully for the parade as well. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, we gather together in this magnificent house of prayer, this place of worship, to remember the word, God's love, manifest in our flesh and blood. We exist to proclaim Jesus as the Lord, we exist to further the kingdom of God by living the anointed life given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We exist to do what the great king, St. Louis, did, to take care of his family, to take care of his people. This evening, let us open our hearts, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts to God's love for us as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries by recalling our sin. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, <coughs> you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father. Lord, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated now and listen to God's holy word. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust in the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, Do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head. And they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, Here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. the Lord, O oh my soul, and all oh my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. 
He pardons all your iniquities. Heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. Crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also all are the earthly, as is the heavenly one, so also all are the heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. commandment says the Lord love one another as I have loved you alleluia 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 the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Jesus said to his disciples, to you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, 
What credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you, a good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will return, will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How is it that this evening we heard this word of life from Jesus of Nazareth, this son of Mary, this son of David, this last Adam, this Christ? How is it that we who are here have heard him speak? After his death, his obedient death, after his resurrection from death, after his ascension, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon those that Jesus called to these instruments. And they took the power of his word to the whole world, even to Tennessee. In 1957, while still a part of the Diocese of Nashville, this parish church was established under the patronal name of St. Louis. St. Louis was a great king, Louis the Ninth, who lived in the 13th century. He and his wife Margaret had 11 children, 11, and they loved them tremendously. They took care of their children. How so? They made sure they learned how to read and write. They learned the wisdom of the world and they learned about Jesus of Nazareth. Louis, the king, and his wife, Margaret, took care of their 11 children in much the same way as this parish takes care of your own. But that was not the whole of his vocation, for he was a king. And he believed that God had anointed him to care not only for his family, the boys and girls, those 11, but the entire country of France. So he was a father, husband and father to his 11, but he was a father to the nation. In the same way that the Diocese of Memphis is a father, a caring giver to all 47 of our parishes. Tonight I want you to hear from me how you are to replicate how Louis lived, taking care of your own, taking care of the diocese. This has been the mantra that I have been speaking since I came here. If you remember, some of you may were there. This was my first Mass uh, in Memphis, the Vigil Mass, this Mass, uh, in 2019. My first Sunday Mass was in Our Lady of Sorrows. So I have a special place in my heart to this place, the place of the great King, Louis. So my friends, how do we replicate the life of St. Louis. First, you take care of your own, but that's not the last part of the duty. You take care of the other 46 parishes. And here is the way you are called to do it. By uniting yourself with me in faith. We have begun a capital campaign the first time in 20 years. 
to take care of the family here and the family of West Tennessee. It's called United in Faith. This capital campaign seeks, with God's help, to raise at least $22 million. And this is what we will do for the diocese. For the diocese, we will create endowments so that these priests and deacons will have the capacity to grow in love. And those who will take their place will be trained through the endowments that you will help me raise. We will have endowments for the deacons, for our seminarians, for our retired priests, for the young people of West Tennessee. We will take care of our own as Lewis and Margaret took care of their families. But you have to do something here, too. Just like Lewis looked beyond his family to take care of the country, so you, looking at the, the diocese, work with me on these endowments, this united in faith. But there's something we're called to do here, and your holy pastor, uh, Keith Stewart, who is my vicar general, give it up for Father Stewart. I've always been the shortest person in the room but by God's grace, I have a vicar general that makes me feel tall. So, Father Stewart, I think I, think I have it down, but let me, let, let me see if I can get those five things you told me about. In United in Faith, half of what we raise stays here. And if you make your goal, and I know you will, I'm looking for making twice of your goal. If you make your goal, 75% of the money stays here. And this, turn around, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take this and move it seven feet this way. Why? Aesthetics? Yes, but more than aesthetics. What we're going to do with your help raising all of this money sacrificially in the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to fill out that organ. And that organ is going to sound incredible with more pipes. And not only that, we're going to put an acoustic piano up there. That's number two. That's number three. Let me think of the fourth one. Uh, ah! Pobrecito. Father Keith needs to take care of the rector because it's falling apart, so we're going to take care of and enhance the rector. And finally, we're the exercise people here. Raise your hand, exercise people. We're going to build a walking track around where? At the Yonder Athletic Field. So you remember the five. What are the five that you're going to do by joining me in United in Faith? What are the five? You remember? First one? Extend the choir. How many feet? Seven feet. What's the second thing we're going to do? We're going to look, turn, turn around so you can see it. We're going to, we're going to fill that entire thing with a pipe. It's going to sound fantastic. What's the third thing we're going to do? An acoustic piano. What's the fourth thing we're going to do? Take care of these guys up here. What's the fifth thing we're going to do? United in faith. I'm being lighthearted, but I want to get deadly serious now. You ready to transition? We live in a post-Christian world. We live in a time where the children are not being taught the mystery of God's love, the commandment of God, right and wrong, how to live for the common good, how to take care of the neighbor. This Catholic Church does all of these things. Your children learn in this Catholic Church through our PRE programs, through our school. So, this giving of through United in Faith is taking care of the generations to come that you will know about Jesus of Nazareth. And when you get to be big, you can tell your children about Jesus of Nazareth. But you're not staying here alone. You're helping me take care of 46 parishes, many of whom are a little less affluent than this parish. We take care of each other, just like St. Louis took care of his family, his 11 children, and the whole country. All things are possible with God. We are to become saints with God's help. We are to care for one another with God's help. We are to do this great thing together, this united in faith with God's help. In just a moment, by God's grace, you and I will come here to take part in the great mystery that this Jesus, 
this son of Mary, this son of David, this last Adam. Though he died, he lives. He seeks to become nourishment for us tonight, for all that will receive him as the living bread. We thank God for him, and in his spirit we say, Amen. I didn't say this, but I'm so happy to hear the children. Boys and girls, I'm so happy to hear you. Especially the babies in the back. Because during, during our COVID fog, I didn't hear the children. But it's such a joy because they, you, are our future. And we do all we do for you guys. Let's stand now. <clears throat> and together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Boys and girls, my brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our hearts be directed to God the Father, our Abba, for it is His will that all of humanity should be saved in the gift of His Son. For the Church, that we may be instruments of God's mercy and compassion by sharing the forgiveness that we have received with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of racial and ethnic hatreds, that all people may see the value and dignity of each person as a child of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alienated from the church, that God will heal their hurts and help them to find welcome and acceptance in our communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God will bring an end to the pandemic, restore the sick to health, and strengthen all caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Adrian Barnes, and for the repose of the soul of Alexandra Maria Nelson, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may share fully in the new life of the resurrection and live with God forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all men and women being chosen by Christ to follow him as priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers, that they will pers persevere in the face of temptations against faithfulness to their call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are your children. We are your teens. We are your adults. We are, we are your family, made so by your Son, Jesus. We live in his word, Father, and we seek to proclaim his word with our lives. Hear and answer our prayer tonight. Give us what we need, that we may go forth as the body of Christ. We ask this in all things, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
there's a kindness in his justice which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his blood. There is no place where sorrows are more felt than up in hand. There is no place where failings have such kindly judgment given. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. For the love of God is broader than the measure of the And our life would be thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your bodies, the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the of the Church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, 
with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, the spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Luke, and with St. Louis, King of France, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely on unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation be prayed, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained as your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all the apostles of this and the sisters, and to all who were facing you at their passing on this life, give thanks and thanks to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our music ministry continues to grow. You can see, uh, uh, please see the bulletin for details, and we welcome even more growth with regard to our music ministry here at St. Louis. Uh, no experience is required. Many parishioners have not received their envelopes due to slow mail service, but they are coming. Please note your account number on your check and drop it in the collection basket if you have not received your envelopes. The parish office will be closed on Monday, February the 21st, in observance of President's Day. Well, that's not truly right. Uh, the office will be open from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, half a day on uh, Monday. The Legion of Mary meets on Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. in the meeting room. The Rosary Guild will, be, will meet on Tuesday, February the 22nd at 2 p.m. in the Clunan Center. Father Dennis Robinson of the Order of St. Benedict will be leading a Lenten mission for St. Louis Church in March. He will preach the weekend masses of March the 19th and the 20th. He will then lead two conferences on Monday, the March the 21st, and on Tuesday, March the 22nd. One conference is at 12.30 p.m. in the Clunan Center for those who do not want to drive at night. And the second is in the church at 7 p.m. The title of the Lenten mission is Oh God, are you here? And for this Mass only, right after this Mass is the Mardi Gras dinner and parade that will begin uh, right after this Mass. An authentic Louisiana-themed dinner will be held in the dining hall, and the parade will follow in the parking lot. Everyone is welcome. And again, Bishop Talley, welcome to this part of the Lord's Vineyard here in uh, East Memphis. Stay right there, Father. Um, I, I was lighthearted talking with Father Keith because he's a friend. But, but I want you to know that he's my right hand man. He's the number two uh, priest of the, of the diocese. I give him lots of work. He has work here as your shepherd, as your brother. But I, I ask him to do difficult things and he does them without saying a thing. So I rejoice in him uh, and his heart and uh, his service. And I, I thank God for him. Please show him. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And, and to the children, uh, I want you to hear, I hope you're all listening, to the children, uh, this is your house because God loves you immensely. God loves each of you personally and immensely. It's your place uh, to belong in. So always come here with great joy in your heart. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teaching of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps toward himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thanks, Mike. Well done.